All right, so we're gonna follow up my previous tutorial about UV unwrapping and just using um, seamless textures and stuff. Um, and now we're gonna do something that's a little bit more specific and a little bit, honestly, it's a little bit better. It's a little bit more, um, well, it's, yeah, it's just more specific. It's a way of taking your UV map uh, and not just applying a single texture to it, but doing something that's a lot more complicated, but also a lot more specific. So I've worked a lot on the um, on the object here and uh, done a lot with it. Render here. Got some light lighting going on, some lighting effects and stuff, but I really haven't done a lot in the texture department. Um, essentially all I have textured are the clasps and the latches uh, exactly as you saw it. So what I'm gonna do here is we're just gonna take this and we're going to um, just kind of turn everything off here and let's see here yeah do all that turn all that stuff off and uh, I'm missing some things but that's okay I'll just click on them Just turn them off this way. All right, I think we can leave everything else. We just need this, really. So I'm just gonna, this is a, got some unique features to it in the fact that it's got this little red cross symbol on it, but it also kind of has these um, uh, kind of bendy straps on it. And I'm gonna wanna use different textures for those, but they're all part of the exact same, um, the exact same uh, object, the exact same mesh. So first things first, what I wanna do is I'm just gonna do my typical cube unwrap. So I'm gonna take my four corners here and I'm going to do an unwrap. So I'm gonna go here, 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 and here. I'm gonna mark those as seams. And actually, we should just go to UV editing here. So I've got those marked as seams. And what I probably want to do is another seam that would be here all the way down the bottom of this. And essentially, what I'm just looking for is that classic cross shape. That is how you, um, oops, I missed some stuff there. That's how you unwrap your typical uh, box. So I've got a couple problems here in the fact that I wasn't able to grab everything I wanted to there. Um, and uh, we'll deal with that in a second. So we're going to take that and just go across here like so. And we're going to mark that seam. Um, and we're going to want to go here like this. You know, I find it easier to do it this way too. And we're going to mark that seam. And we'll go across here as well. And we're going to mark that seam. Okay, so now we've marked the seams. Uh, of the, those four corners, we need to do the same thing up here. Because again, what I'm just doing is I'm basically just treating this exactly like a cube, right? And I, you know, I'd, you can skip ahead if you really want to. Um, but I don't, sometimes I think that it's probably, you know, uh, not bad, you know, to, s you know, see the uh, the whole unwrapping process. The other thing is the having the mirroring on might help this a little bit too because then I wouldn't have to be doing all the corners, but that's okay. So sometimes doing your uh, applying your mirror modifier a little bit too soon can actually kind of hurt you. So now I've got these here, but I don't really have a good uh, uh, a good sense of how this is gonna um, unwrap yet. So this might be a good point to like unwrap. Interesting. 
So then again, if something's going really funky, see how this is all really, really small here. So um, this might be a good time for me to try my checkerboard uh, texture just to kind of see what it is. So we'll have, um, oh, I haven't done one yet. So we'll do a, let's just do a checkerboard texture here. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. We'll hit new, I'm gonna call it test. And I'm gonna go to my shading and I'm gonna add a image texture right here. And then we're gonna open our checkerboard, checkered texture here. Uh, and uh, that's going to give us there we go, a good sense of how things are looking. And you can see they're pretty distorted still. Um, so we got a lot of work here. Uh, one of the things that I'm noticing right away is that there's some real massive scaling issues over here. So let's tab out, hit Control A. We're gonna apply all transforms, go back in and unwrap again. So that actually helps the scaling uh, a real decent amount, although it's not amazing yet. So if I take a look at this, I can see I've got some really, really big problems. Um, and uh, I'm gonna hit the, uh, the link button here. And then I'm just going to kind of uh, highlight my areas. So my major issues are really those top two corners, um, which, which makes a lot of sense because I really didn't, uh, I haven't like gone down the edge. I really haven't like defined where the, um, where the flaps are gonna end. So this is all still interconnected here. So let's go off of that synchronization. Whoops, ah, wrong keys. I always hit the Windows key sometimes when I move to my home keyboard. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna set my seam and I'm gonna set it for this um, here. So if I just all the way around it like that. Um, then I'm going to mark my scene, select all, and unwrap. Now that is so much better. So now what we see is what I just basically had to do is I had to cut out the inside. So essentially by taking the inside and making it completely different, um, or you know, completely seamed all the way around the edge, I, I basically made it completely different. I totally seamed it uh, away and separated it from the main body. And so we've got a pretty good looking uh, thing here. So we, you can see the straps, you can see the red cross, you can, see, you can see pretty much everything. So this is where the fun part comes. So <clears throat> what I can do is I can actually take this texture and I can export it as a UV or as a, as with these lines. So I'm going to go, uh, let's see, I, unless they changed it on me. Uh, there it is. Yep. Down at the bottom, export UV layout. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to call this case lid, and I'm going to call it uh, UV exported. Okay, and that is going to basically uh, take this and export exactly what you see there without without the steel textures or the checkerboard as a PNG. So if I take this here, you can kind of see there is my case lid UV exported as a PNG file. So I'm going to right click, and I'm going to open this in Photoshop. any second now. All right, so there we go. So now we have essentially what our um, our UV map is gonna look like here on a layer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we wanna res it up. Now, when it exports, I, I, don't, I didn't actually stop to look. Um, it comes out 800 by 800 by default. Now, if I go export UV layout, can I? Ah, yeah, so I can actually bump it up in size here. So let's do that. So. Let me go back to Photoshop, hit cancel, let's close this. Okay, now, I'm going to uh, take it and we're gonna res it up. Now, how much you res it up, that all depends essentially on um, what the size of the object is gonna be, how close your character is gonna get to it, that sort of thing. So if you're doing this for a video game and it's something really important, like a health pack or something like that, you, you probably want to make it 
pretty high res. Um, most of the the um, uh, most of the uh, textures are usually done in multiples of 1024. Okay, you need it to be square. So for this, I'd even say 2048 is probably a good thing. You could even go upwards of 4092. Oh wait, 4096. If you wanted to do a really high resolution um, texture, uh, I think 2048. I'm probably gonna be good enough for what we're doing. Um, but again, you know, sometimes you have to like, what, what I would probably do then is I'd create multiple versions. So I go 4096 at first. Um, and then I'm going to uh, open with Adobe Photoshop again. And I closed Photoshop, so obviously now it has to open again, uh, which wasn't the smartest thing, but that's okay. So here we go, and now we've got a much, much, much higher resolution image. And then I can kind of design this, and if I need to go down in resolution, uh, I can scale this down. I can totally do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a couple of textures online that I want to kind of put into this. And um, you can kind of see we've got all the information that we need here. We've got the cross, we've got the straps, and everything like that. So we're going to do a bunch of things. But first, I'm going to hit pause on the recording here, and I'm going to go find a couple of seamless textures that are going to help us out with this. OK, I'm back. So now I've gotten a few different kinds of like some metal textures. That's a bronze one that I got before. I uh, did some texture, uh, like some, some just some base texture. Uh, the thing that I noticed about a lot of these is they're not square, so they're probably not completely seamless, although this one looks like it might be. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to like make this kind of like my background texture for the, um, for the case. So I'm just going to take that, I'm going to open it, and then I can say select all. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to paste it. Now the way Photoshop works is you see it kind of comes in as a layer here. So I'm going to bring this up here like this and just kind of take that like so. And then what I can do is I can duplicate the layer or I can just use the move tool alt drag and it's just going to allow me to take this There we go. That didn't actually snap. There we go. Am I snapping on? Snapping should be on. There we go. So now I should be able to just, yeah, with snapping on, I can just take this and just make some duplicates. Okay. So now I've kind of got that base texture the way I want it. Oh. There we go. And um, I can take these all and just throw them into a folder. So I'll just go here and I'll say new group from layers and I'll just call this blue texture. I'm actually not really a huge fan of this, but I'm going to soldier on just for the sake of the demo because I'd like to. Um, bleh. It's a bleh texture. Oh, boule. Um, and then I'll call this one is my UV layout. So once I kind of have this started, what I'm going to do is file save as, and I'm just going to take this, I'm going to case lid UV, and I'm just going to call this layout. And I'm just going to use this as a Photoshop document or a TIFF file that has layers. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, so, you know, yeah, the layers are checked. So that way I can I can save my layers and continue to work on them. Um, so I like to take my UV layout and put it over top so I can really kind of see what's going on and see what I'm doing, um, at least as best as possible. Now, so I want this kind of blue texture just for the outer case. Again, I'm actually really not a fan. I'm, yeah, let's just, let me open up another, another one. Let's see here and what it does.
kind of like this one. Let's just see what this does. Oof, that's huge. That's actually really good. So, um, oh yeah. So let's see. Well, it's it looks big, but you know what? When I copy it and paste it into the thing, it's, yeah, it's, it's moderate. So I'm going to just take this like so and alt drag. I'm also holding the shift key down, which takes it and ah. Um, uh, moves it in a straight line for me. So that actually doesn't look too shabby. I like that a little bit better. I like that a little bit better. So I'm just going to take this blue texture group and trash it. And now we'll take all of these, put them in another group, and we'll call it um, blue texture. And now we'll take our UV layout and kind of throw it above. Yeah, I'm liking that. I like that. OK. So now what we want to do is I want to assign, if you will, assign that red cross a completely different texture. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go, uh, no, I'm just going to stay here. Uh, I'm going to open, and I'm going to find, uh, let's see here, old paint red. Yeah, I kind of like that one. So we're going to take that. So select all, which is control A, control C to copy. Come on back over here and V to paste. So now the real question is, is, is this actually a an actual styled or a, a seamless texture? And we will find out in a second. And it is not, not even close. You can see that that's awful. So now I kind of have to make a decision. Depending upon the texture, you really shouldn't ever scale up Photoshop files. Um, but I could probably scale this up just a little bit and nobody would ever notice. So I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to um, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. Oh, crud muffin. <laughs> I did the wrong one. So I'll just rotate it this way. OK. So there we go, 90 degrees, just like that. Set it right in the center. And now I'm going to hit return. And now I'm going to edit, transform, and I'm going to scale it up just a little bit. Shift and Alt, or just Alt, I mean. I'm old school, so I'm used to the old Shift key being a part of it. Now, so now that I've scaled that up, I've got this, um, I've got this uh, red layer here that has this paint. So now what I can do is I can kind of say I only want this red layer in certain places on that uh, thing. And so I can do that a couple of different ways. If you're in GIMP or something like that, you just got to go with the eraser tool. So what I'll do is I'll save it. Uh, so I'm just going to hit Control S. And then I'm going to, I, I like to lock my UV layout layer so I don't accidentally erase it. And then I'll go over here. There's an eraser, which is right here. And I can just start, whoops, full hardness and full opacity. And I can just start to erase. But what I like to do that's a little bit better because I'm in Photoshop is I like to add a layer mask. And so layer mask allows you to paint black. And wherever you paint black, that layer becomes transparent in that area. And what's really nice about that is that essentially what ends up happening is um, you can always get it back. So if I want to get that back, I hit the eraser. And now if I erase on the layer mask, I get it back. You got to make sure that you're actually on this uh, layer mask here. When you add that layer mask, you got to make sure you're on there. So that's that's actually really, really, really important. Oh, Opacity is at 92%, OK, so that you can bring that back. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my brush with 100% opacity and black. I'm going to make sure it's it's got 100% hardness. And I'm just going to go here, and I'm just going to uh, get rid of the red texture where I don't want it. And uh, I'm going to do this fast. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll be you'll, you'll be able to see what's going to happen. So essentially what I'm doing, as you probably already figured out, is I'm using the, the exported UV map as kind of like a roadmap to doing a, a nice texture. So 
I could make this look a lot better, and I should, but I'm not going to. But you know, go in here and see there, I, I, I erased a little bit too much. So I'll kind of come in here and I'll get it back, okay? And so on and so forth. So that, I think, is gonna look pretty good. We're just gonna leave it at that. So now, we also have to worry about these straps because I wanted these straps to be something different and something special. So if I do want those to be something special, I should go back here to my, um, my um, image and I should just kind of take a look at what I did. And that was this, um, so that is the bronze two JPEG file that I have there. So, you know, I could decide I wanted the bronze on there or I could go something completely different. I feel like I should do something like a steel texture or something that's gonna be uh, across this area. So what I wanna do is let's open up another texture here and uh, we could do any number of different metals. I have some galvanized, that's a pretty cool one. Stippled, ooh, I like that, that might be cool, but I kinda like the galvanized metal. Oh, I like the scratch. Let's let's do this one. Let's let's do this. Let's do the scratch up. I did I did that twice. So I'm gonna take this tileable scratched one. I'm gonna copy and paste it here. And now you can see what I can do here is I can just have this alt drag, and I have to cover the whole thing. And uh, so I'll take these three and I'll just call that, uh, uh, wait, uh, new group from layers. I'll call this top strap metal, okay. And now let's take that group and I'm just going to duplicate it and I'll call it bottom strap. And if I Go to my move tool and bring that down. Now I can kind of bring this down. And what I'll do is rotate the whole thing. Whoops, just to kind of make it look a little different. And take that like that. And I can even like scale the whole thing down, maybe a little bit. So transform, scale. And that's I love how you can scale the whole group in Photoshop these days, it's great. So just kind of bring that right about there. That looks pretty good. Let's take our top strap, one, do the same thing, scale it down a little bit. Just like that. So now I don't want all of this on the um, on the blue section. I only want it on the strap. So again, I'm going to add a la uh, mask, and I'm just going to take my brush, and I'm just going to paint out with the black color where I don't want that galvanized steel to be. And again, I could do so much of a better job than this, but essentially, for the sake of time your time as well as mine, I'm not going to go and do an amazingly awesome job of this. All right, whoops, yep, a little bit too much there. That's okay. And then I'll go to this one and add a layer mask and do something similar. And again, you get the idea. It's not gonna be perfect. Now one of the other things that you can also do if you wanted to, is you can bring a little bit more texture into this. So for instance, I got a little rust here. I don't have any rust on the other pieces of, of metal. This one's not so bad, but I mean, you know, like I, I should probably have a little bit of rust on there. So one of the things that you can do here is I'll take, and this is what's beautiful about Photoshop, is I just grabbed some rusty metal, that's cool. 
select all copy I'm gonna go back to my thing let's close some of these tabs here boom boom there we go okay so now I can take these and I can paste this rusty metal here and I can just take it and I can create a rusty metal section here like so and just keep going and then what I'll do sometimes is I'll, I'll get uh, let's get all these into a group uh, first new group from layer and I'll call this rusty metal so I'm going to do that Kind of get that set up, and then I'll take all of these, like this, highlight them all, and then Alt, whoops, I messed that up, Alt, drag, with the shift key uh, held down, and then snapping takes care of everything. So now I've got this uh, rusty texture that's kind of here. What's going on here? There we go. I just need to back out a little bit. So now I've got this rusty texture, and what I'll do is I'll I'll go here and I'll add my layer mask again. But this time I'm going to make sure the layer mask is selected, and I'm going to hit Edit and Fill, and I'm going to fill it with black. So now it just totally disappears. And so now what I can do is I can select that layer mask, and then with my eraser I'm going to take my hardness down a little bit actually all the way and I'll take my opacity way down if you've got a if you've got a brush um, you know or a tablet I mean then you can you can do this a little bit more uh, intuitively bring that up a little bit so now what I can do is kind of add some rusty texture to parts of my metal here if I wanted to just like that and kind of lend some and I, I like that because it's kind of getting rid of some of these pieces of that blue texture which are really uh, obviously um, copies I wasn't a huge fan of those so And so on and so forth. And again, you kind of get the idea, right? I'm just uh, not going to do too much more here. So that makes a lot of sense. So now I've got that. Uh, one of the things that I didn't do is this blue texture. What I need to do is I need to keep it from getting on the, the what is it, the inside of the lid. So again, another layer mask. Grab my black brush here. And then just very carefully erase so that I can do what I need to do for the lid. The underside of the lid, I should say. Probably a good time to save. And there we go. And again, because I'm using these layer masks, they're awesome. If you don't really understand layer masks or something like that, then there's a lot of tutorials out there that can teach you how to use them. I've even got one. Uh, let's undo that, that was a little too much. Uh, and uh, there we go. Whoops, that was way too much. So there we go. So now I want to do something for my the inside of my lid. So I got like a red velvet. Um, where is it? Ah, oh, there it is. Here's a red velvet texture. Let's select that, copy, and bring that in there. Paste. And again, it's a very, very, very similar, very similar thing. So I'm just going to take that, Alt drag, create a copy. That is seamless well to a degree it's not great actually it's not a great seamless textured but that's okay there we go good 
good enough though. So now I've got that. I'm gonna take those, make those into a group, call it red velvet, okay. And I'll actually drag that underneath the blue texture here so I don't have to worry about erasing it. And there I've basically got a simple texture, or not so simple actually, that I'm ready to, to bring back in on top of the object that I have. So what I'm gonna do is first I've saved it. I'm gonna turn off the layer that has the UV layout and I'm then going to go to uh, save as. And I'll call this case lid UV and I'll, let me uh, put it in the textures folder here and I'm gonna make it into a PNG. There we go and I'm gonna save. Now, large file, fastest saving, smallest file, slowest saving, and also it can open in the engine a little bit too slow, so we're gonna hit OK on large file size. It's gonna export that out. <clears throat> and then we go back to Blender. So now that we're in Blender, I'm going to take this, right, and I'm going to change that. I'm gonna hit Open. And it's going to be, uh, what did I call it? <laughs> case lid, there it is. Case lid, there we go. And now what's really cool, let's go ahead and take a look at this a little bigger here. You can see how I've essentially done a custom texture that matches the UV by painting it all out in Photoshop. Uh, take my subdivision surface and kind of throw it back on there and that is starting to look you know pretty darn good actually um, I could go in and do a little bit more work on like this is obviously repeated a couple times and there's some Photoshop techniques that you can do like this rubber stamped tool and so on and so forth to make it look a little better same thing here it's very obviously repeated multiple times so I might go in and do a little clone stamp work uh, to create a, a better a better look um, and then you should also ins inspect things like, see here, you got a little bit of blue coming back around the edge. Um, that means that right here, um, obviously I've got some blue kind of coming into the, the texture. Oh, right there, right? And then right there. So, you know, you want to kind of inspect it and make sure that it's good. The other really big thing that you don't want to do that a lot of people do is make sure you turn that top layer off before you export it as a PNG and bring it back in over top of your object because if you don't, then you'll have the actual lines of the vertices on top of your object, which looks rather weird, if I do say so myself. So essentially, that is how you can um, create a custom UV map for your object um, by taking the, you, you, first you unwrap it, you do all your seams, and then you export your UV layout you bring that in the Photoshop, and then you can copy and paste um, textures that you find on the internet or whatever um, all over, you know, the object, and kind of, you know, do some Photoshop magic. If you're not good at Photoshop, you know, uh, or you use GIMP or whatever, that's totally fine. Um, but this just allows you to have multiple textures, okay, right? Multiple textures on a single mesh. And that's what's really cool. So I could even go so far as, let's, let's do this. So um, if I were to go back to Photoshop, okay, I could even do something like um, do some text here, right up on top here and just go, how about, um, I'm just coming up with this on, you know, the fly, Sheffield Lab. Laboratories. Okay, so now I've got that. I can go and increase my font size. We need to increase the font size even more. Um, so we'll just take this and just so much easier to. And then I boom. And then I can rotate it. Hold my shift key down, lock it down. And then I can basically have like a label on there, right? So I hit save 
and then I'll go and I'll I'll save as again. Oh, okay, fine. So I'm going to hit save as, and then I will go back into my textures and save it again right over top of the original. So case lid UV, click save. Yes, I want to replace it. Now let's go back to Blender, and it doesn't always auto update, so I'll just go back to my shade. Whoops. I hit spacebar on that, and I'll just reopen the same file again. And there it is. Oh, and it's upside down. So that's kind of an interesting problem that we have there. So um, I don't want that, obviously. So I go back to Photoshop, take this, bring it here like so, and rotate it 180 degrees. Ah, I didn't hold the shift key down long enough. Okay, make sure it's dimming down a little bit more. There we go, save now. Come on, you can do it. Save as. A PNG, save over top. Bring. There we go. And now let's go back into Blender. And again, nothing, nothing there until I reopen the exact same PNG file. And now we've got what we want it to look like, or at least theoretically. Obviously, this is a mess because I haven't really done a good job doing that or, or anything else uh, that was really helpful. So, you know, that, that was definitely definitely need some work it was very sloppy work of me and i hope you forgive me for that but at the same time hopefully you understand what the method is by which you can take uh one mesh object and divide it up into multiple textures you by exporting your uv unwrap and bringing it into photoshop so yeah hopefully this helped you uh kind of learn a new technique and uh if it did Give a thumbs up, and if it didn't, you know, let me know in the comments if there's anything I could have uh, done a little better.